2018 Kawasaki Vulcan Voyager VN 1700. I'll be taking the gas tank off today. There are several reasons you need to get the gas tank off if you do any service work on your motorcycle. You have to remove the tank to get to the radiator coolant cap, which is unfortunate. The VN 1700 runs extremely hot when you first buy it. Uh, I actually changed my coolant out to engine ice. It reduced the temperature a little bit. I live in a very hot area. I'm right outside of Myrtle Beach. Uh, so most of the time it's in the 90s. Uh, during the summertime, sometimes in the 100s. And this bike will get extremely uncomfortable to ride if you don't do something to cool it off. Other reasons to remove the tank would be for running wire, uh, get to the spark plugs, any type of other maintenance you may need to do to the top of it. Now removing the fuel tank is not really difficult. There are several things you'll need to know if you haven't done this before, how to get it off. Uh, we have to remove this collar around the ignition here. We have to remove these two bolts here. This piece will lift up off of here. We'll need to remove our seat. There's a few things we'll have to do. We'll have to unhook this wiring harness under here. We'll have to disconnect the fuel line. And on the other side, there's a vent tube that we have to take off. When you remove the vent tube and the fuel line, you will lose a little bit of fuel out of the fuel line. So have a couple rags handy. Uh, that way you can soak it up. It doesn't run all over the uh, floor. Once you get the fuel line off, it usually stops dripping. So even if you have fuel in the tank, it doesn't continue to run out. So you won't make a completely uh, giant mess or you don't have to drain your tank. It doesn't hurt though to run the tank down a little bit before you take this off. That way you're not lifting up all the way to the uh, fuel on top of the fuel tank. To remove the seat, the key goes in the side cover. Press down a little bit on the back seat while you're turning the key. And the back seat will lift up a little bit, pull toward the front. The front seat, lift up, pull toward the back of the motorcycle and your seat is off. Next thing I'm going to do is I'll remove the tank cover and the ignition cover. Let's start by removing one of these accessories here. My drink holder is not necessarily in my way, but it's in the way of the camera. I'm going to go ahead and remove my phone mount also. That way I have plenty of room. So to take this cover off, we're going to need either a screwdriver or a body tool. We'll need a four millimeter Allen wrench or a socket. And we're gonna need a 10 millimeter socket to remove this bolt here. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna remove this ignition cover. This is something else. This motorcycle has about 1100 miles on it. And this piece always vibrates loose on me. So I'm gonna be calling the dealer to figure out whether this is covered under any type of warranty or not. Again, that may be something that's just on my vehicle and it could be other people are having the same issues. So once I figure that one out, I'll let you know also. So this collar right here will just pop off of there. So I'm gonna grab a body tool so I don't scratch up my plastic any more than it already is and pop that off of there. I just grabbed a little body kit off of uh, Amazon. I think I paid 10 bucks for the body kit. It comes with some basic pieces, parts that you'll need uh, to do basic things on a car or on a motorcycle. I'm gonna just start this a little bit. Once I get it started, I'm gonna work my way around. Again, this may feel weird when you first do it, but this is just pressed into place. And it pops up out of there. As you can see, there are no bolts, there's no fittings, there's nothing holding this in. It's just completely uh, press fitted into place. There's a slot on the back of here. Remove these two. Again, four millimeter Allen socket, wrench, Allen wrench, uh, ratchet, whatever tool you prefer. And finally our socket down here at the bottom. Or our cap nut, I should say. Let's get those pieces off. Pull straight up and this piece comes out. Next step at the back of your tank, two 12 millimeter bolts. Just get those off. This clamp will come off. 
Now, depending on what you're doing, by taking that off, this will allow you to pick up the back of the tank a few inches. So you can get, you can almost get your hand under here. If you are just fishing one or two wires up under here, you can easily push them up through there, pull them out through the front with a fish tank, use a fiberglass uh, fish tape. Anything you gotta remember is if you're fishing and you can't see where you're fishing at, your heads are right here. If you mess up, you get the wire on the head, you're gonna burn your wire up. Um, you're liable to set something on fire. Uh, you're liable to short something out. So for a couple more steps, you can get the tank completely off and then you can zip tie everything in place like it should be. And that way you're not laying on something hot. I apologize for the unsteady hand here. But as you can see right here, this is a vent tube. At the very top of that vent tube, it's hard to see, but there's a little clamp up there. A pair of needle nose pliers, you should be able to loosen that clamp up, slide it down around the hose, pull this off, nothing will come out of this tube right here. On our other side, again, you'll have to give my hand, I'm trying to keep my hand out of the way here. When I pick that up, that's our line for our fuel pump. So we'll have to disconnect that wiring harness. The fuel line is right there. So you'll have to slide that red clip down and around. When you pull that red clip down and around, the hose just slides right off of the back of that. Now, since I'm out here alone, I'm gonna take this rag and I'm gonna slide it up under here. And that's basically gonna give me some space so I can work on the lines underneath it but without um, having to try to hold it up and work on the lines. Now it's a little hard to see what I've got here. I've got a pair of bent needle nose pliers. And right up here I want to grab this little clamp, squeeze it on the clamp, and slide that down around my hose. So now that I've got this clamp off, this hose will pull straight down off of here. Well, this is a vent tube, so nothing will come out of here. You're not going to get gas or anything all over you. I need my other hand, so I'm going to pause the video. That just pulls off there. So your vent side is unhooked. So now we got to get the fuel line off and the fuel pump unplugged. Now I've propped up my tank a little bit more, um, so i got a little more room in here now. And once I get the vent tube off, with most of these uh, wiring harnesses, a release of some sort, some you press, some you pull. This one here, you actually just take your thumbnail, pull it out, and then your fuel pump will unplug. Last thing we need to do now is release the fuel line. Now I did have this little piece pop out um, when I lifted the tank up, so I'm going to show you where that goes. If you do lose one of those, it's actually the insert for the tank up here. So that keeps you from crushing the uh, tank. So there are two of those. Sometimes they stay in place, but in this case, if they fall out, that way you know where it fell from. Now again, when we release this fuel line, we are going to lose some fuel out of here. So I'm going to just take this, I'm going to pull my line up, or my wiring harness out of the way. My motorcycle is not hot, so I'm going to take one of my rags, I'm going to put it down underneath of there, that way I don't get fuel all over the place. The hard part of this is not going to be releasing it, it's going to be me holding the light, the camera in place and um, doing it at the same time. So if you had two hands or your hands are both free, this tab here pushes down, that tab pushes up. When you pull those apart, you're gonna slide this clip forward. So that's down. Let me get my other hand in here, see if I can keep the light on you. So I'm gonna go up and down at the same time. And once I do that, that clip, pushes towards the back. Once that clip goes to the back, then your fuel line will pull. Once you get this clip off of here, fuel line will push to the back and come off and like I said you lose just a little dribble there and that's it now what this little clip does is this little kit clip catches in front of that and basically keeps the fuel line from blowing off so that little clip once you pop it off fuel line goes to the back and again apologize I made it look that a lot harder than it really is but with one hand 
it's a little bit more difficult to do. So now that I've got that done, all I have to do now is I pull up on the back of the motorcycle tank, grab the front without smashing my fingers, pull to the back, and as you pull to the back, there's two rubber bushings, and I will show you once I get this off, that the tank actually sets on. Up and out evenly, and we are off. And I had about three quarters of a tank in there, so that didn't make it any easier. And the bushings that we're talking about that sets on are right here and right here. Those are the front supports, and that's what keeps your tank um, from vibrating, and that's what holds it in position. Um, so when we're going to put that back on, there's two little grooves under the tank. I'll show you. Or if you look under the tank, you'll see them. Those are going to slide onto here first. We set the tank down in place. Once we put the tank back on, we'll put it back together in the opposite order that we took it apart. If you're changing the radiator coolant, again, unfortunately, this is where the cap is. The only way to get to that cap is to remove that seat. You can't add or top off your coolant without removing that. Your thermostat is under here. The water pump is under here. Everything is underneath that tank. So without knowing how to get that tank off, you're not going to do a lot of maintenance on your bike. Um, this also opens all this up. So... You can feed wires up and back, up and through without having to uh, try to fish underneath the tank. This is where I fed my camera lines up through. So my camera lines are in here. And again, if you were trying to fish that up underneath that tank, you can fish up through there. And again, you can fish up through here. But if you're not careful and you drop down on one of these heads, you're just going to end up melting your wire, catching something on fire, or shorting something out. Uh, taking, that off, taking that off gives you access to this so we can zip tie these in place, put them exactly where you want them at, and then there's no problem. Since I have the tank off, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and pull a positive and negative wire. I'm going to pull a 14 gauge wire from my battery to the cow. Uh, I'm going to zip tie it up front somewhere where I can get to it later. I'm not going to do anything with it right now, but eventually I want to move my GPS up underneath the cowling. For instance, you may want your GPS on a constant hot. That way, if it does get stolen, they can't get it back to a shop somewhere, and when they turn the key off, it disappears. If they push it on a trailer, you'll never know where it goes. So if it's on a constant, basically it's going to track it no matter where it's at. The problem with being on a constant, if you don't ride the motorcycle often, you're liable to drain your battery. It doesn't take a lot of juice, but if it sits for two or three weeks, you're liable to come out with a dead battery. All right, now that I've got my wire ran to the front, I just balled it up under here for now. Again, I'm going to use that in the future. Don't know when, don't know why, but... It Definitely future use. I've zip tied all my wiring back up here. I want to make sure there's nothing in the way that's going to get pinched when I put the seat back on or when I put the gas tank back on. Pull my rubber grommet back over my uh, tank support. So everything's zip tied nice. Nothing is touching the motor. And I'm going to just take a second to wipe these uh, heads off while I'm at it. Since I'm here, you're never going to be able to clean them without. Uh, pulling that tank off and I'm just going to inspect everything else while I've got it apart the reassembly I put my little clip back on here so it'll make it easier when I go to slide this up on there once I pop the fuel line in there I'll be able to just take that clip and close it that'll make it a little bit easier on me our first step is going to be putting the the uh, tank back in place uh, this is the little groove I was telling you about these are what fit on top of those rubber grommets so you've got one of those on each side so you've got to kind of angle it down in there um, somebody from the factory, uh, this was prior to me, um, gouged that up pretty good. Looks like they did it on the ignition. Luckily, the trim piece covers that up, so if you do bump it, uh, it sucks, but not the end of the world. Your trim will cover it up. Just got to be real careful you don't grind it into uh, oblivion there. You want to go down in at an angle, and you're just going to kind of feel for where those are. If you imagine the tank is in the position it should be, You'll just kind of feel that fit on those two grommets. When you pull back up on the front, it should not lift back up. The important thing we've got to do here is we've got to make sure we don't crush these hoses that are back here. So on the back, you'll have to lift up the tank and make sure you put that to where this hose right here and this hose right here are not being crushed by the tank. They should be sitting underneath of the edge. Back to our fuel line, our fuel pump. 
I'm gonna lift this up a little bit just so we can see what's going on. There's my fuel line. This is right here. Here's my fuel pump wire. I'm gonna put some rags underneath the back again. So the first thing I want to do is I want to drop my fuel line on. To do this, you just take it, slide it in place. Now there's a little clip on the front of the, uh, like the fitting on the front of the uh, fuel pump or the gas tank. You have to push past that fitting. Once you get past that, that red clip will push back forward like I just did and lock into place. Now while I've got this propped up still, I want to go ahead and hook up my fuel pump. And again, I'm trying to keep my hand out of the camera angle here. This one to go in one way. Right there's your catch we were working on before. So that will push up in and lock into place. The pocket right in there that's going to tuck up into. Keeps you from hitting it on the head. And again, we want to make sure we're not crushing anything in here when we put this back down. We don't want to smash any of our wires or harnesses. I'll leave that right there for now. Now our other side, this is a vent tube. Just going to push the vent tube up on there. You may be able to do this with your fingernails. You may need a pair of pliers like I used earlier. Make sure your vent tube is up on there all the way. The little clamp, you just pinch it together. And again, I, I can do that with my fingers, but you may need a pair of pliers. And that holds it in there, keeps it from falling off. Worst case, it's a vent tube. Um, any type of overflow, if you get hot or if you build up pressure in your tank, the gas is gonna run down on top of your plastic cover on top of your head and run off the back. That just lets the overflow drip down onto the meat. After that, I'm gonna pull my rags out of here. I'm not gonna lift it too far. I'll set my tank back in place, again, pulling the vent tube and the fuel line out of the way, or the other line out of the way. So my two little grommet inserts, which dropped out earlier, pop them in place. Again, that just keeps you from crushing the, uh, the paint. Wire retainer, back in place. Two bolts. And you may have to move this around a little bit to get them to line up. Start them by hand. Don't ever uh, gun them in there unless you're taking a chance to cross or something or don't care that you cross or anything. Again, check again. Make sure your vent tubes are clear. You do not want to crush those vent tubes. I right, have the vent tubes out of the way. I'm going to go ahead and tighten these down. It's a 12 millimeter. Checking those tubes. That's weird. Tubes clear. And you don't have to super tighten those. You want them snug, but you don't have to crush them. Again, you're going to get the spacer inside. And now your tank's pretty much secured back in place. I'm going to get a rag, clean all this up while I've got it apart. Uh, much easier to clean while you've got everything apart and then we'll put the uh, trim piece on and I'm going to try to find a way if yours vibrates um, to keep it from vibrating when I put it back together looking up under here there's a couple foam pads in the back one here one here mine is vibrating up here in the front um, as you can see by the goo I've got on here I tried to just take some regular weather stripping and shove it up underneath there uh, that actually stopped the vibration but since I've got it off, I'm going to go ahead and try to make something a little more permanent out of it. I'm not sure why they would put padding back here, not padding in the front. Uh, I'm sure other people have to be getting some vibrations out of this, so hopefully this will take care of it. What I've got here is um, a piece of foam. Uh, I'm fortunate enough, I've, I do uh, low voltage for a living, so I get these out of the inside of structural wiring panel boxes. But I know you can get online and you can find foam blocks, single-sided tape on one side, and just foam padding on the other. Basically just like that. I'm going to take, and I'm going to put a strip down here and a strip. So what I've done is I've prepped my surface. Uh, basically took some goo gone, got rid of all the adhesive that was already on there. I've cut a couple little strips here. I'm going to take some rubbing alcohol. 
and a cloth and I'm gonna clean off the surface where I'm gonna put these tabs and we'll stick them on there and then we'll see if they fit on there again and again I'm just gonna put this right along the edge there because that's where it seems like I'm vibrating as I'm driving down the road I can stick my fingers down there and push and the vibration stops so I'm 99.9% .9 sure this is gonna solve the problem so I prep my surface clean the surface use the rubbing alcohol that gets the uh, adhesive that will bind really well and these things will never come off unless you want them off this piece slides down over your ignition lines up on the tab on the back here and then all we've got is the two bolts in the front here and our 10 millimeter nut in the back I'm just going to start these. I'm not going to tighten them up super tight. Again, just going to snug them. That padding on the front seems to fit really well. Don't think it's going to vibrate anymore. Again, this grommet has a groove in it, so you'll have to line the groove up with ignition. If you tighten these up first, it makes this a little tougher going on. So I'll put my off at the top. Again, I'm going to slide that around a little bit to where it fits in there. I loosen my bolts up a little bit more. That pops on once you get that in place. I'm going to snug the front bolts up. Just going to hand tighten these as if it was a screw. I'll take my 10 millimeter, tighten my back one up. If you've never put a seat on before, there's a little tab right here that will hook underneath this little bar here. So you've got to start from the back, slide it up under that tab first. You just kind of have to push down and you'll feel it fall into place. In the back, the two little pins will stick underneath of that. The back seat has a little plastic tab, same as the front. It's going to fit under this little metal clamp hook that push down it'll click in place and that's it our seat is on and our gas tank is back in so that's how you remove and reinstall the gas tank on a 2017 and that's how you remove and reinstall the gas tank on a 2018 Kawasaki Vulcan Voyager VN 1700 if you have any questions or comments please leave them below send me a message if there's something in particular you want me to take off the bike I'll show you how to put back on let me know if you have a better way of doing something that you see me doing and you think there's a faster better way please let me know about it i'm not a motorcycle mechanic i'm not an auto mechanic just like to do this on the side hope the video helps somebody please subscribe and like the video